Hello and welcome to the Radness Podcast, episode 77 with Tony D. Pasquale. Hey. hey! Third time's a charm, let's go! How you doing, Tony? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good, just uh, horribly hot, like I assume you guys are. Oh yes, it is not comfortable anywhere on the planet right now. <laughs> no, it's not. I, I saw like an article that said like, uh, it's the hottest it's been in 100,000 years, so that's pretty good. Yeah, that rules. Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot awesome. of generation. Yeah, that, that's something to, you know, mark your calendars for. It's uh, it's funny because in, I think, Phoenix area, it's only about three hours away from where we're at over here, three or four hours. And uh, they've had a record number of days over 110, like, consecutive. Like, they, they've had, I don't know, over a month of, like, 110 plus heat, which is unnormal, even for, really? even for desert life. You know, no break. It's pretty bad. That's kind of insane. Yeah. Ugh. Death yeah. Valley got to 133 degrees. Ooh. <laughs> and that's our backyard. <laughs> that's I don't know if anyone listening doesn't know what Southern California like. It's it's beach until it's desert. So we're yeah. we're on the desert side of this this stuff. So it, it's pretty hot. Yeah, I, you guys already know, but I'm in the humid Midwest in Illinois. Not anywhere near Chicago. I mean, I'm still in Illinois, but. Not uh, near Chicago, more in the, uh, like, uh, Hooplehead area, you know? More the redneck. Uh, <laughs> is that, is that <laughs> south? The pickup truck area. Is it south or north of Chicago or, or west? It's uh, south. It's more in central Illinois, but... Uh, not, quite mu- yeah. not, not quite Munster? No. <laughs> it, it's a, really close to the capital, Springfield. Okay. Okay. What's the... Uh, what's the- comic book and, and like uh kind of visual scene like out there everybody like that are they are they into vi- visual print there's nothing <laughs> I, don't, no. I don't know anyone <laughs> i don't know a single other person who like draws comics or cartoons around me um, there's no scene there's nothing it's kind of like being in a box um yeah <laughs> there's <laughs> nothing around here <laughs> Hey, well, congrats to you to, to flagship that enterprise, bro. I mean, it always takes, it takes one person and then the, everything can change. Yeah, maybe. I know I've, I've like inspired uh, my friends to be more creative, but you know, maybe, I don't know. Maybe more people will draw comics just because I did. Cause they're like, well, that guy did it. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> for, the dream, right? For no reason. Did, did you grow up there? Is this like where you were born and raised or did you move yeah. over there? Yeah. I've lived here my entire life in this old barn house from before the civil war pretty much oh wow trip so the history you know, wasn't born the before world. the civil war but <laughs> no dude you're a young cat oh yeah i was like oh i don't know i i just i pictured you older because we've never seen each other but then i was like oh yeah, yeah. oh i'm i'm 22 shit a youngster you you're got your a, whole a, life come ahead on, of you. Kid. I love it when we get together with artists that I look at their work and I'm like, oh, this is aged. This person has some wisdom and some knowledge from some years. And then we meet them and they're 22 years old, man. That that really makes me happy because it shows that there is a bright future in the comic book scene, but especially in the art scene in general. Uh, kudos, like your work, we haven't even introduced it yet, but uh, you you do a comic book called Nugget which is just beautifully vibrant colors and such a fun, I, I can't even say read because it's not really like too type, uh, type based at all, but the visuals and being able to like, just know the story from looking at it. Fucking love it, bro. Uh, love it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't, um, I, I, it is like, I don't know if it is like reading or not, <laughs> well, I mean, no, technically... when, when I see people look at it sometimes, like uh, people that like aren't familiar with comics at all, I've seen people like read it where they just like kind of look at it and they like flip the page and then flip the page. It's like I don't even think they're looking at the panels. Like, right. I think they're some people don't words. know how to read a comic if there's no words. It's really weird. <laughs> it's it's funny because according to like the science of reading, you it that breaks down with you need syllables and lettering and and able to like speak it out it, when you're looking at something there it's really not reading but your nugget book does feel like you're reading and following along with a story as you're looking at each panel 
And I guess that's why I, uh, I, I had a hard time. Like I do feel like I'm reading this book, but I'm not really reading anything. It's, it's awesome, dude. It's a, it's a really nice way to do yeah. comics. I don't think it's easy to hit that mark. Absolutely it? not. And then the, and you're like, oh, I'm 22. I'm like, Holy shit, man. Yeah, how? Where, what? So what did you grow up like watching and learning, like learning from? Cause I have my own preconceived notions about your work and like who I think it could be related to, but like who, when you were a kid, what, what kind of like got you into drawing and art and stuff? Uh, when I was a kid, I would become like obsessed with cartoons. Like, I don't know when I, when I was a kid, I would just become like obsessed with things. Like whether it be like uh, elephants or, blah, blah, blah. But then it turned into cartoons and it like started with like Ed, Ed, Nettie and Courage the Cowardly Dog and SpongeBob and Flapjack and Chowder. And then uh, one day I was going through like, because when you're a kid, you like rooting around your parents' rooms when you shouldn't be. Naturally. I was, like, going under my mom's bed and I found like this box of Mad Magazine, like paperbacks. Like they weren't the magazines. They were like the paperback collections of them. Yeah. Found, like an artist named Don Martin. And okay. I don't, I don't, he like, like a, like struck, like light getting struck by lightning or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. As a kid, I was like buying, trying to buy every one of the books he ever made on eBay. Like I made my dad go to Barnes and Noble with me and we bought just the uh, humongous, like hard bound, like edition of every comic strip he ever made for Mad Magazine. I would just be like looking through that constantly, like studying and like copying. I don't know. His stuff really got me. <laughs> I, don't know. I really got it. I love it when you, when you randomly stumble across something and it hits you that hard and like literally skews your whole path, you know, you're like, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm into the normal cartoon stuff. And then you get hit with a mad magazine and you're like, Holy shit. It can be <laughs> done like this. Yeah. And that, I mean, a couple things. It's like one, that stuff still happens. Like I still learn about artists that I should know. And like, especially doing this stuff and talking to a bunch of different artists, everyone has their own, uh, inspirations and you know, uh, the stuff that like got them into creating when they were young. And a lot of it, I'm like, shit, I knew I've seen this work before. Like I was kind of familiar or maybe some other artists around that style, but I'd never heard of this person. And it's, it's pretty wild, you know, it never goes away. It's always still getting like inspiration from something you haven't seen before, no matter how old it is, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah, I'm sorry. What? Oh, I was just going to say, and two, uh, it just, I mean, finding stuff in your mom's room, that's like probably the coolest thing you could have found. Some yeah, of the, I don't sure. know what else you found, but, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. That, that's a cool, that's a cool find under the bed. Yeah, one uh one time I um uh, when I was like a little kid I found this uh <laughs> I found this I don't know what it's is it like the Kame Sutra? Some sort oh, of like yeah. horrifying sex book that had like just <laughs> full on like naked pictures of people having sex in like weird positions and shit. It's like I just looked at it as a kid. I was like, Ugh! and like threw it away. Dude, that, it, I, it, I'm pretty sure that probably is the Karma Sutra. It's, it is shocking. What's funny <laughs> yeah. is everybody has that life changing story. Like, oh, I found a porno in my parents' bedroom. Uh, it changed my life. Oh, that was the first time I'd ever seen Bush or first time I'd ever <laughs> seen a nipple or something. And then, but you're like, no, no, I found Mad Magazine, man. This shit was life changing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Don Martin changed my life more than the, uh, the crab position. Uh, yeah. you know, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know if anyone, I mean, even 35 years old, 36 years old, however old I am. Uh, I still don't know if I have need for the crab position. Yeah. You know, we might never get there. Who knows? Poor you know, maybe, maybe my parents did at that time, but uh, whatever. That, I, that I is a very Don funny Martin. find though. That's, I mean, that's awesome. It's, yeah. I needed Mad Magazine more than I needed to know, uh, the, the crane or something. <laughs> so just to make everybody want to go look at your stuff a little bit more, what was it that inspired you from that specific style? And were, what were you able to like glean from that, that you feel like you wouldn't have been able to grab before? Because I mean, everybody knows Mad Magazine. Everybody knows the style. Everybody knows kind of the, their, direction that they went with their magazine but what was it f to you that really stood out and probably you feel have the most impact well, i guess it would just uh 
Man Magazine like inspired me to just do it. Like it inspired me to like actually like just try and like I would make my own magazine with my friends and stuff. Like we never like printed it because we didn't know how printers worked, but we would just like make a bunch of issues like and like staple them and stuff. Uh, but from that, from that, like being inspired to just do something. Um, then they kind of went away when I got into like junior high, like, I don't know what it was, but maybe puberty made me stop caring about drawing naturally. But then yeah. I kind of like rediscovered drawing through, uh, watching, like looking at our crumb, like in his, like, yeah, I watched yeah, the yeah. R crumb documentary and that was like another, like zap of lightning into my head that was just like do something like oh, yeah. he was uh, like him and don martin were both like just do it do it just try and do it at all and then from our crumb i found like all those all comic stuff and then i found uh jim woodring and jim woodring i probably you could see the most influence of his stuff on my work just because it's like a silent comic where like weird stuff happens yeah uh, but yeah i those three are probably my big three all, like they really inspired me to to like actually do it, not just like this is cool, but do it. I I don't know how like much the maybe there are cartoonists that are like better than them or better at telling a story than them, but they inspired me the most. So I guess that makes them the most important to me. Yeah, it Even, yeah. comes down to like yeah. how it impacts you and like what it is that that you are drawn to. Uh, that, you know, that's the the reason that art is so subjective like you you literally one person can look at a piece of art and be like ah that's trash another person looks at it and sees the value in it and and loves it and it speaks to them in a way that that no one else it doesn't speak to anybody else and i i think it's funny that you can't you that you are seeing that side of it because you have such an appealing style in in your comics that it's the i the lack of wording immediately to me was like oh wow i i thumb when i first got it i opened it and looked through the first couple pages and again i too was looking for words and i thumbed through the book and was like oh no words and that set a completely different set and setting in my mind and then the the colors that you use the way that you use just such saturated colors and nice thick lines like that speaks so much more than words do right like just being able to to grab hold of that that style or the, that artistic voice without really using any words it's it's phenomenal man it, it it blew me away and i guess what i'm saying is like to to be able to do that like to to be able to have no words and the colors speak for for you and to set that mood and setting uh is it's a talent. That's it's great, and it's fun to read. A lot of fun to read. Well, thank you for so much for saying that. And yeah, I, I think the main reason I don't use words is because it's like, I mean, what would like the characters even be saying? They'd just be saying like, "Oh no," or like <laughs> <laughs> about to go on a walk. It, it seems like they're unnecessary. And the other thing is just like. I guess there's two more reasons, but the other thing is like, I, I really like the idea of making something that anyone can relate to, no matter who they are, like, like wherever they are in the world, like the language barrier, like anyone can like take it and read it if they know like to read it like a, like the right way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, then the other thing, it's like, there's so much, meaning lost from like art or literature or anything made from hundreds of years ago just even if we sp still speak the same language like over time our language changes so much that we might as well not have even been speaking it it's like when i'm trying to understand how like a medieval person felt i'm not reading a book by them or a tr translated book i'm trying i'm just looking at like art medieval art i'm mm -hmm. looking at like the art they made about like god or their daily life or whatever it's like i i think an image holds up way better than a word does when you look back on it and the meaning of an image holds up way better than words do and it's just easy for people to look at an image and they're like that's that's what he was trying to say or 
I don't know. I feel like it's, I feel like this will hold up better than if I had words in it. It's to, to me, that's funny because I know so many people who are the opposite who are, yeah. I need words. Like I can look at a picture and then I, I just, I could interpret it a million different ways and I don't know how to, you know, whatever. I give me some words and I will be able to know exactly what you're saying. But mm-hmm. like coming from that, the opposite perspective, like no, no wonder you're able to do what you're able to do. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, it's tough, uh, to create a visual narrative. Obviously, you know, you use, um, multiple frames it's not jumping from exactly like one idea to another random idea it's pretty you can follow along as you as you look through it but to take that approach on it dude and like just to hear you talk about it yeah you're you're on it man for for as young as you are keep fucking getting it did you uh (laughs) did you go to school for like art history or like uh, communications like anything or are you just out of high school doing art how how'd that life go once I got out of high school, I went to uh, college for a year and I really hated it. And I was really lonely. Like I spent all my time in my dorm. It was really hard to like uh, make friends or meet people probably because of my own like lack of effort or whatever. Um, but it just really sucked. And then I went back for, then COVID happened. And then I went back for another semester online and I went to do teaching originally. And then I just went to do art because I was like, this, the art thing is what I actually want to do. But once I got back to college and it was all online, I was just like, this is such a waste of time and money. (laughs) I, it like, I'm not learning anything. I'm not learning any skills. This is just like to get a piece of paper degree. It's like, and the gamble I guess I've made was like that hopefully the nugget comics or comics or art that I have made since that time would mean more than a degree would like that the piece of paper I've made <laughs> that have like, uh, like drawings on them would mean more than uh, a stupid diploma or something like that. The, this would speak more than a diploma would or yeah that just i wanted to learn the skill the way i wanted to learn it and without being held back by college because if i was at a co- if i actually stayed in college the whole time i wouldn't have nugget and i wouldn't be on this interview right now i wouldn't i wouldn't yeah. have anything i'd just be set back and yeah i don't know how, it would suck how's, I'm glad the, I dropped uh, out. <laughs> how's the journey with nugget been so far i mean because yeah like we said the first one came out a little but three years ago ish and yeah. uh, you know you just released uh, the third installment, basically, and the biggest one you've done um, by almost double. Uh, it was yeah. a lot heavier in page for sure. Um, how's this whole like journey been going for you? I mean, are you tabling? Are you doing shows? Are you how? Are you just submitting to other comics? Because I see you in anthologies and stuff. You you were nice enough to do uh, the issues of ours. The second one will be out soon. Um, but yeah, so I mean, what's your what's your game plan been? Yeah, I uh, just want to say thank you guys for having me in that. And I think it act like uh, people actually found me through it. So thank you a lot. And oh, yeah, also, yeah. Um, yeah, and I've never tabled or done shows before. Um, I'd like to at some point, but I mean, I came into this during the COVID stuff. And now it's like, I don't really know what to do or I don't <laughs> It's, a, it's like creating your own game plan out of nothing. I get it. Yeah. 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 And um, I, I think it would be a good idea because uh, I don't know if you guys know the Know Nothing magazine people. I, I don't know the, them, but I know of them. Yeah. yeah. They were the first people to ever publish uh, any comic that I made. And it was like a nugget comic. Um, and uh, they say that like whenever they sell them, it shows they do really well and people like them. And I don't know if you guys have ever sold them at shows or if it does well, but I don't know. Maybe I should look into that because they said that they do well there. Yeah. So I was hesitant to bring this up, but I I was going to talk to you afterwards. But the last two shows that we've popped up at, uh, we brought we brought a couple at least and sold out of all of all four. So people look at it. It's appealing. It's 
it's bo- it's both kids, both like all genders, all ages, all types. Like it's just it's eye catching and grabbing. And they obviously there's you know cats in Redlands don't know who you are from from Illinois, but they don't care. They look at it and they're like, this is fucking interesting. And I, we've sold out of it every each each show. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. I mean, I should look into doing a show at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, I mean, if there's anything, I mean, you're, how far are you from Chicago? Uh, I guess like four hours away drive. Okay, so um, that is still a trick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I maybe I'll like uh, take the train up there or something. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, there's a, it's always an option, man. There's a lot of stuff going on on the East Coast. You could fly in, you know, probably a pretty cheap flight into. Uh, Carolina or like somewhere right around there. Uh, I know there's stuff going on. Uh, New York is not far from me, you know. Uh, I think I think you'd benefit from just getting more exposure in those shows. Like you never know who's going to be in the foot traffic. You never know who's going to be tabling. Um, you might have to pay a little. It's like a little pay to play kind of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're not sure how many you're going to sell, but it could be worth the opportunity for sure. Yeah, and I think it'd be good to uh, like meet people. Cause I don't know yeah. anyone that like does this and I'm not really uh, like friend, like close friends or friends with a lot of like any cartoonists really like it'd be good to like meet people in real life. Totally. Or- and I know <laughs> it, it's funny because you, you've worked with people that we've worked with and that we don't really know either, but just on like a comic book or like, you know, um, artwork kind of level. Uh, yeah. But like, just we just printed Isaac Roller's new book and interviewed him for the podcast, and he mentioned your name because you did the inner back cover for his newest book. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, you know that guy?" And he was like, "Nope." Yeah. <laughs> was like, oh, okay. But that's the community, man, and that's the way it works. Like you, you get in with a couple or one person, and all of a sudden, you know all of the people they know and everyone wants to be helpful and everyone wants to be like offering opportunities. And it's, it's not hard as long as you put yourself out there, you know, and that's, I think what people, especially in that community respect, because it's such an intimate art form, you know, you're telling a very personal (laughs) story and the art is like, so, so telling of yourself that there, there's like a mad respect, I think amongst the community just for putting something out. Yeah, I I've definitely like seen that before. Like, just to just to even put anything out there, like, and just to be judged or like, just put your money where your mouth is, literally, and like print it, yeah. like, like to to actually like care about something, <laughs> like it, it's respectable. To like totally. to just to just care about anything, <laughs> it's it's... like, and people respect that that don't even like draw comics or have no idea what I'm making. It's like people around me, it's people genuinely respect just the fact that someone else cares about something that isn't like, like I don't know, like video games or smoking weed or something. Yeah. <laughs> and no, nothing <laughs> against any of that. That's fine. Uh, no. I got friends that that's all they do is play videos. And, and I have friends that all they do is smoke weed and some do both. I don't know. <laughs> but Ben diagram. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's that inner circle and that's how they get down. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if you can make yourself in, uh, if you can worm your way in between video games and weed, you got fans for life. Yeah, <laughs> dude, start start a exactly. Twitch stream. What are yeah, you doing? Yeah. Jesus. No, disres- no disrespect to all the weed smoking gamers out there. Yeah. Sorry. I, no disrespect. Please buy uh, my stuff or just look at it and give it. Right, just like, like it and share it. Yo, Bookmark it, it. Yeah, Nugget lends itself to both video games and weed probably. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, man, there's nothing better than finding a group of people that you can just like identify with and like, like enjoy knowing that you're kind of in the same, have the same ideas and like the same realm of creation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is that like a, a newer thing though? Cause you're younger than us. We're, we're in our mid to late thirties. Uh, so the internet, when it came out, it was that place. I mean, definitely, you know, instant messenger, MySpace, those things were like big when yeah, we're we from were the AOL age. Yeah. We, <laughs> we were getting those discs in the mail. Um, but yeah, there, there was that age of that when you're like in high school, but how, as a younger cat, 
like was there a place on the internet that you could find that was yours or i mean there's so much like divisiveness and like crazy stuff the bigger the online world gets you know what i mean there's like more opportunity for like mean shitty stuff i don't know what are you trying to say right now i don't know because you could join chat rooms back in the day and it was like people that liked pokemon or whatever and that's all it was and now there's trolls and there's people that Uh, go into places that like talk trash and like try to like break stuff up so what you're doing is just trying to prove that we're far older than this young man yes and that it's a whole (laughs) nother world that we live trying to make a point that the internet was cooler when we were kids (laughs) yeah um we didn't get internet till like uh, probably 2007. So I guess I would have been six years old and in kindergarten. Um, I didn't use the internet to like connect with people. I've always kind of been like a Luddite. <laughs> like I didn't yeah. like uh, computers. Um, I still don't really. <laughs> uh, like when I was a kid, I only used computers to go on like, uh, cartoonnetwork.com and play video games with the cartoon characters I like. Yep, yep. Um, I never got big into chat rooms. Uh, the only social media I really use is like Instagram to like post art stuff. And then I guess Snapchat to communicate with people, which is basically just text messaging. Um, yeah, so, I, there, for, there's some cool people. Uh, I don't know if you know them, like the Zomic book people. Yeah, yeah. Or an Islamic book. Mm-hmm. They're pretty cool. And I was in uh, one of their issues. They're they're pretty fun people, but I just don't really like using the computer to interact with people or like I don't know. There's a difference between like texting something to someone and like looking in someone's eyes. Totally. <laughs> talking yeah. to them. You're, you, <laughs> there just is a difference. You it's like funny. your artwork are like an old soul. You have like an old feel to you. <laughs> It's very yeah. funny. Uh, why is beyond your years? Some may say. I some don't know. Some may say. Uh, but yeah, no, honestly, because when I first saw your stuff, dude, I didn't know you were young. I didn't know how old you were. I just assumed you were like my age, older. Yeah. Maybe you would be in your forties. Uh, because I guess when we started, I said I had some preconceived notions about the artwork that you might have been inspired by or like based some of your work on. And you didn't mention any of the shit that I thought you were going to mention. So. What, what was it? So to me, when I first saw your work, it reminded me a lot of two things. Um, similar in animation style, very like simplistic, but lines and colors. One would be the Beatles movie, Yellow Submarine. The, I've Do you get always that a lot? wanted to see that movie since I was a kid and I've never seen it. You've never seen it. Oh, never that's right up your alley, I would bro. love I would love to one day watch it because it looks like it would be my shit. Yeah. I've never seen it once. Like, I'm like, you know, is this the son of a kid that worked on that shit? Yeah. Um, I think it lends itself like, or your work, you know, compliments that movie and, and vice versa. And it's been a while since I watched it. So maybe that's just like my brain morphing things into uh, uh, familiarizing something. Um, and the other one was this animation short called The Point. And it came out later um, and actually Ringo Starr from the Beatles was involved in it. And him and this uh, musician named Harry Nilsson did the soundtrack. And uh, it was big. It came out in the 80s, maybe late 70s, 80s. Um, But when I was a kid, it was still in syndication, like on Nickelodeon or Disney Channel between other shows. If they had like a 10 minute spot to fill, they'd play this short. And I love the songs and I love the animation and um, the main character is just like this little guy in a top hat. And it reminds me, yeah. Nugget reminds me of that like a lot. I've never heard of that. I'm going to write that down to watch it. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't That's checked cool. it out, it's like it's a fully like musical short uh, animation. Um, I guess him, uh, Ringo and Harry Nilsson wrote it while they were on acid or something like it's, <laughs> it's pretty wild. But it was like a kid's thing when I, you know, when I was young. That's cool. That sounds cool. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to watch that Yellow Submarine at some point because, like, it feels like Yellow Submarine is like a big missing chunk in my head. Like, Dude. maybe if I watched it, it would <laughs> maybe it would make me uh, even better doing stuff. I don't know. Your your mind might connect back to like pre memory of like childhood and be like, I did see this. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, 
I don't know. So for whatever reason, those are the first two things when I saw your work that like I associated it with. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm definitely gonna look into those because I like um, when people say my work reminds me of something and I've never heard of it. I like to go like read it or look into it. Hell yeah. Like, one person said it reminded him of like this guy who drew like silent comics from like the 1920s. They're like these like socialist like wordless comics and i was just like never heard of this guy i guess i'll look into it and it's like really cool like little comics i can't remember what the guy's name was but uh just like you could learn a lot from just the way he drew like facial expressions and stuff like he was some like german guy <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> it's just like yeah uh it just looked cool and i like uh looking at what people just uh will say and i'm definitely going to check the point out and i will watch yellow submarine at some point <laughs> Yeah, for I, someone with a Pink Floyd so poster in the background, I feel like you should have. Yeah, watched you should definitely watch Yellow, Yellow Submarine, Submarine by now. Yeah. Oh, I, I, uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall. That shit changed my life. That was another uh, artistic uh, zap. Like watching The Wall. Have you ever seen that? And, like, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Animations in it. Oh it's my insane. god, that album and the movie. Those like, uh, blew my brain up. Dude, I, I didn't. Was, I didn't even smoke weed when I first heard that album, and I was like, "This is the coolest album I've ever heard." You know exactly. what I mean? Like me, me either. I was like 14. I was like, this yeah. is this is everything. Hell yeah. And I can I still listen to it today and it's like, yeah, this rocks. Like just on every level. It's like I'm so glad this is like one of the first albums I listened to. It's like this is so sick. That's funny. Were your parents into like classic like that kind of era, classic rock? I know they're into Mad Magazine, so they probably were into like that kind of stuff too. Counterculture. My parents are like both kind of Gen Xers and they were more um uh, like 90s grunge and stuff, which I love as well. But like 90s indie rock and grunge and stuff. Um, I mean, my dad grew up listening to like Black Sabbath and Kiss and stuff. Um, but they were both really into like 90s alternative metal and rock. Okay. Um, but yeah, they didn't really, I mean, that's a good thing about the internet, even though I complain about it. Um, I found like Pink Floyd and stuff through youtube video recommendation algorithms or like the internet or just this looks cool i'll listen to it like they didn't ever show it to me or like sit me down and yeah. listen to this <laughs> album it's it's more like it like they'd be there'd be a song on the radio from the 90s they'd be like i love this song <laughs> you like cool <laughs> that's funny man it's funny how yeah. that kind of exposure is almost more impactful when you find it on your own right like if they would have sat you down and been like here's pink floyd and check out the check out the beatles and and all of this <laughs> Maybe like, sucked. yeah you're like you know <laughs> what like i this is what my mom told me i was supposed to like like fuck this i'm gonna find something different you know what i mean but when you f like just overhear it and you're like oh what the fuck is this and, they're, and then they're able to connect yeah. it's like a whole different vibe man my grandparents did show me the beatles though and yeah i love the beatles Never seen Yellow Submarine, but yeah, I should at some point. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love the Beatles. Like, listen to all those albums so many times. Love all the, uh, yeah, just so creative and fun. I mean, oh, yeah. obviously, it's the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People have hard opinions on them, but I'm like a stark believer, like the Beatles rule. Like, hands oh, down, yeah. you know what I mean? Easily. You can Everyone... talk trash all you want, but it's good. It's like with Pink Floyd, like people, it's, there's got to be one album that you think is good by either of them. Right. Like they've made so many albums in like different styles and different directions and stuff. There's got to be one that everyone thinks is like good, like at least one. Otherwise, you're just trying to be the, the anti that, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, you're, you're trying too hard to be like, <laughs> yeah, just say you like the song. Jesus, yeah. we'll move on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or at least there's got to be one. There's got to be one fucking song you like. Yeah. like yeah. They wrote 300 songs. There's not even one. <laughs> not a single That's one. A Overrated, like, bro. Overrated, bro. <laughs> uh, not even one song you like. It's like, fuck you. You're just a liar. Dude. Whatever. Uh, I got to ask you this, too. This is another question I had for you. Um, I've looked through your stuff since, you know, issue one, and you've, you've developed it and kind of made the stories longer, um, done more pages. Uh, you know, not all of them are as short as I think they were in the beginning, which is awesome. Do you write the idea out 
Mm. Or do you do you base it off like a drawing that you did? Um, I gotta think for a second. Uh, when I'm coming up with like ideas for Nugget, um, it's usually like something weird happens in my life, or something in my life happens, and then my brain or mind or whatever like tries to re like retake something that happened and change it into like a visual idea like like the the nugget cup story or whatever like in the first issue uh-huh that's about like how i kind of have ocd and like if something's not right then it's like the whole fucking world is falling apart or whatever <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or sometimes it's just an idea that I'm thinking of, and it's just like, how can I translate this idea into a visual way? And I'll just like kind of brew on it and brew on it and brew on it. And I'll try and write it out. Like not, I won't write it out with words. I'll thumbnail sketch like all the pages out. Like I'll draw little uh, blocks on a piece of paper and then draw little doodles of nugget. Like I'm not I'm not drawing the background, just what Nugget's doing and what's happening to him. And usually, uh, the first time I do it, it'll be trash because I just have <laughs> to think about it more. And a lot of times, like two different ideas will both come together and make a story that I think would have been better than either one of them separate. And that's I think is why they're getting longer because instead of just rushing and drawing whatever I thumbnailed out first, I'm letting it brew a little bit and then. Uh, I'm combining these two different ideas into something that's whole. Like, uh, so much of it happens in my head. I hope that made any sense. But yeah, I don't write it out like on a a notebook. I uh, doodle it out in like thumbnail drawing. There's no like words involved. Now that was a a very good description of what goes on in your head, bro. I it's like you you see things in pictures. And so that's just what you're translating it out to be. And I've noticed too, just like exactly what you said, you kind of let things take a, a turn and make the story develop into something that's completely like just not a secondary idea, but just like a, where the story you didn't takes think it. it would yeah, go. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes they just come together like that. And it just works in my head. I don't know if maybe it seems like pieced together or something, but, sometimes it just makes sense to like take these two ideas and put them together. And then it like speaks to then like, it's like I've connected these two dots and then it means something more than they would have meant separately. Totally. And, yeah. And it, then it's like together, they both have a meaning that goes beyond what they originally. Meant. And I, I really love when that happens when I'm able to like take two or three ideas and like squish them together into like one idea. Do you, and then they like all reinforce each other. Do you feel that like um the ideas that you create or like the the artwork you create based on, you know, the idea for the story comes a lot of the time just like internally, like you said, where it's like, oh, I'm feeling this way and this kind of describes my O C D and we're we're building that comic, or do you get do you get inspiration from other things too where you're like, oh, that was really a crazy idea. I'm gonna use some of that uh, and sprinkle it in because some of your stuff, it's almost interdimensional or cosmic or uh, I don't know. Metaphysical. Yeah. 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 Um, Like, does that come from other places or is it mostly just like your internal? Oh, uh, that's like a weird thing because I kind of believe that like our, like our subconscious or like the part of our brain that like makes images and stuff. Like, just like when we dream, like, when we dream, uh, we're not making anything new. We're like recycling a bunch of imagery. Like everything that you've ever like dreamed before is like something that you've seen before, or it's just like your brain's like taking it all and collaging it together. Right. It's, like, it's, it's internal AI, AI or old exactly. school AI. <laughs> and I think that's what happens in my head when I'm trying to make pictures because sometimes I'll just draw something. And then I will look at something else and be like, Jesus Christ, my brain like completely either ripped that off or took it and combined it with something else to make. I, I'd much prefer when it combines it with something, not that it just looks ripped off, but it's like in this uh, Nugget story that I'm uh, drawing right now, like it's 
the boat that they're on. I didn't realize this until like I was just looking through my books over there. It looks like the exact same boat that uh, is in that the kid uses in where the wild things are to get to the island. Yeah, I and, I wouldn't have noticed until you just said that, and that's very funny. It, it looks really like. <laughs> Yeah. First, I, at first, I was like, I think I need to redraw this, but then I was like, I don't know. It's what? Okay. <laughs> what's hey. the point of redrawing it? It's an <laughs> a homage at this point. Yeah, that's what? that's what uh, you know. That's a it's an homage to uh, where the wild yeah, things are at this point. So homage. That's fine. what's gonna draw everybody in. Yeah, and uh, that's the one thing they're gonna be like. You know what? I picked this up because it looked like the the boat from where the wild things are. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm, I'm curious too. Now that you lifted that up, because you're doing, it looked like a little thicker paper. Are you working ink on Bristol? How how are you drawing? Um, I hate Bristol board. Like absolutely despise it. Um, I use uh like Strathmore uh. I don't know what it's called. Is it like watercolor paper or is it like heavier? It's um, I've got it right here. It's just called Strathmore drawing paper. Oh, it's just the drawing like paper. Okay. Yeah, it's like pretty loose. I I hate Bristol because it's so like pencil on it, and I'm completely relying on pencils. Like, okay. I I can't I can't just ink on the page. I can't do it. I'm complete. I have to pencil something out completely before I can ink it. Or else, I'm I'll mess it up. I'm not an ink slinger. I'm a complete pencil dweeb. <laughs> <laughs> That's good though. Respect. Hey, respect. It, it turns out good. Like the the finished product, you know. Fuck it. Whatever makes it look good, man. Yeah, but then there's like uh, pencil lines and crap all over it. Yeah, and then maybe I should try doing blue pencils, but that just seems weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the non-photo blue uh, kind of works. You're still gonna get some of that graininess that the pencil gives you anyways when because you're you're scanning it in and then digitally coloring it i'm assuming or yeah i digitally color yeah so right. it's, you're gonna have to deal with that stuff if you use blue or pencil it doesn't really matter yeah. you know yeah it just I, depends I on how sloppy you are with the pencil you know if you how much you yeah. actually have to edit if you groove that paper with that pencil lead there ain't no hiding it yeah oh yeah i i press deep too yeah. i don't sketch i'm like you got hard hands heavy hands yeah. like i do yeah, yeah dude yeah I, this paper is this paper is getting carved into yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Straight up. laughs> i had teachers tell me i painted like a gorilla they're like you hold your fucking paintbrush all stupid you push all hard gorillas paint better oh yeah than you. i'm i'm fucking Thanks. complete dog shit at painting <laughs> i can't paint at all i'm so bad at painting that's why i'm like doing the digital coloring because I was using markers and it looked like shit. So now I'm, uh, it, it just looks so much easier, less expensive. Uh, it looks just so much better. I, I can't think of a excuse not to do it, to just do the digital coloring. Um, I just think it looks better and it's a lot easier and just, I'd say it would, it takes more time to digitally color than to like color with like markers or water paint or, yeah, but it's but, more uh, forgiving. Uh, it's definitely more forgiving, you know? Exactly. It's so much more forgiving. Um, I don't want to ruin a page. It's, it, yeah. And I don't, it, I kind of save all the coloring up um, until I get inked with all of them so I can just do it all on the computer at once because I don't like using a computer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like a necessary evil. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. The first thing that I was drawn to when I first grabbed the first nugget years ago was the color, the, the saturated colors with the nice, like heavy, dark lining. Like that's what, what grabbed me like, oh man, this is, this is pretty to look at. You know what I mean? For, first and foremost. So having, having the digital color cleanliness, I think on top of the hand drawn like inked out stuff really sets a vibe that works well with your comics and i i kind of tend to like overall yeah and i think yeah and the first two nuggets uh they weren't colored they were both black and white and i think maybe it worked for them i mean i, I think the first one's kind of garbage but the second one I, I think is like actually good and maybe like a the inking, like the black and white worked for it. But um, since I kind of realized it's like, well, there's no words and it's all 100% visual. It's like, 
I'm kind of ignoring this entire thing about like perception and visualizing something like all of color. It's like it feels wrong to do that, and it also it just looks it pops. And, yeah, yeah. And I think that I mean that's what you're mentioning is the covers are all in color. So yeah. when it's on a, a table with 20 other books, it pops. It it's, does. There's a lot going on. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't matter what your book looks like or how well it's done or how well it's written or the quality of the artwork, all that matters is someone picking it up off the table. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Just looking at that cover. Yeah. No, and it, I really do think the color sets such a tone especially not having any words like it really shows like we're in a fun vibrant land you know what i mean like di mm -hmm. dive in you know what i mean it's it's beckoning almost yeah and you're it's obviously gotten a lot more detailed too in this last issue i feel like you you did a little bit more of the um stuff that takes time um some of the the like mandala kind of like giant mm -hmm. monster and stuff and all, those yeah. those pages like I could just say, I, I don't want to sit there and ink that. I don't, you know what I mean? Like that, that's a, a process <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But I don't know. It, it, it's fun to like, it's fun to just draw something really big and weird looking and like, I, there's something rewarding about just drawing like a big, weird, strange thing. Yeah. <laughs> and having it work. It yeah. Is. For sure. For, for, I mean, when I was a kid, I loved drawing monsters all the time. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is the logical end point to that. Cause it's like, <laughs> I love drawing like these weird, strange things happening and like really big. It takes up two pages or whatever. Yeah. I love just like drawing like a big, strange uh, thing, but it's not, I, I don't know. I, I don't like super disgusting stuff. <laughs> like, I, like if there's like poop and pee in it, <laughs> but, uh, I, I like, I like drawing something weird and strange. I don't know. No, not, not super disgusting, but I respect that stuff. <laughs> no, I think it's great, man. And like I said, it's one that we can always, no matter if it's a, a kid, a teenager, an adult, I'm like, you should probably check this out. Like, it's pretty sweet. Like it, you know, it, it kind of transcends, uh, like an age group in that in that yeah, sense it does. or and i think it makes the us older folks feel younger it's like almost got i don't want to say nostalgic but yeah kind of a n nostalgia totally. to it uh i that, think probably that's, that's what because you draw from mad so much like it does have that like oh shit you're right it does remind me of that vibe you know what i mean that, i'm really glad to hear that because like that's something i've always really liked when i'm like looking at a piece of art like there's this weird feeling that some types of art can give you where like it kind of scratches a thing in the back of your head and it it feels kind of like nostalgia or i don't know like a dreamy kind of feeling that's like the art i love the most and yeah that's it's so hard to like even try and think about how you can make that feeling happen in people oh, i'm it's just glad so that it's getting that weird nostalgic feeling I think that's why it's so, so impactful though, is because you can't plan to do that. Like that is an obvious symptom of the art you create, not the reason you set out to create the piece of art. You know, if you set out to say, oh, I'm going to create the most nostalgic and, and put the most feeling into a piece so that everybody can get that like curious rem reminder or like, I feel like I recognize this, but I don't know from where, like you can't. You'd never Do nail it on purpose. No. Yeah. And if you tried, it would come off as something completely different than you were expecting. Yeah. And I don't know, like what I was saying earlier about like our brains kind of like recycle all the stuff we see into like our dreams or whatever. I don't know. Maybe since like a lot of people, we've all kind of grown up in the same culture, mm -hmm. like with this and we're, we're all three of us are probably like comic or like cartoon nerds. Mm -hmm. maybe like it, it just affects us in a certain way because i'm trying to draw with that like i'm drawing with that weird kind of like amalgamation of all these different things like right. and i i hope that affects like normies too or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's probably mostly like a uh like a non like you're not trying it's like a sub uh subconscious intention it happens organically yeah. yeah 
no, I, I'm really glad that it at least like makes you guys feel that way because that is 100 something that I hope that it does, but I have no real control over because you can't really set out to do it. Oh, and yeah. If you did set out to do it, like you said, it it would just be like shit. <laughs> <It's always fun. laughs> ne- never try. That's the that's the lesson we're trying to teach here. Never try to do anything. The more you try, yeah. the more you're going to fail. If you just do stuff because you want to do it and, it, you know, you're getting it out, you're going to have a lot better product. I don't know. Maybe that's just <laughs> me being weird. But, uh, yeah, man, we're we're getting up to time here. Um, I know right. you said you don't table, um, but where uh, can people check you out? What's the, You got the website. You got the Instagram. Yeah, um, my Instagram is at Hopeless Comics with an X because that's how cool people spell it. That's right. Um, I have a website where you can buy them from. It's uh, Tony Deepis, or I think it's Tony Deepasquale Comics at BigCartel.com. It's there's a link in my Instagram. Just go to Hopeless Comics. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> right on, on oh yeah, we'll put it. We'll put it in the description. Or just look up my name and put Nugget, and then I think you'll be able to find it. Hell yeah. Dude, thank you so much for sitting down with us today on this hot and muggy afternoon. Uh, we really appreciate the time, and we love your work. Glad glad to have it on the Rat Nest site. Uh, Nugget 1, 2, and 3, all available on ratnesttickerco.com. So if you want to check them out, you can get them there. Uh, also, along with at his Instagram or contact him directly or whatever, but we got it too. Uh, yeah. Great conversation this afternoon, dude. Th- thanks again for sitting down with us. Thank you guys for sitting down with me. Um, be- before we like cut it off, I just wanted to say uh, when I first started drawing Nugget, uh, I like didn't I had no idea like how to use like a printing company or whatever to like get your comic book done. Um, and I had DM'd you guys because I didn't know what the difference between a distributor or a printer was. And uh, <laughs> this was like before COVID even happened. I'd okay. never even drawn a Nugget comic yet. I was like trying to draw one myself that I eventually gave up on, but I DM'd you guys. <laughs> it's like, Would you guys be interested in printing this Nugget comic or like whatever? I was like completely desperate because I was uh, like uh, taking care of my grandpa who was dying of cancer at the time. And I was just like str- struggling to get this thing done and blah, blah, blah. And it's just really uh, surreal and cool that now three years later, uh, you guys are having me on an interview. But yeah, it's, just, it's strange and weird. And I don't think you guys ever even saw the DM because I think I deleted it the next day because I'm like, I, I don't even have finished work. I honestly <laughs> was going to add, like, I was like, fuck, I try to answer everything myself. And I don't know if I remember that. Like, did you really delete it the next day? Because I don't know if I ever I did, I did see that. I think I did because I, the next day I was just like, what the hell am I thinking? I don't even have one page drawn of this. Dude. I don't even know if I'm going to get this done. And I like, deleted the message but it was just strange yeah i had no idea that what the difference between a distributor and a, like a publisher it, was in all sorts we crap. we don't do anything that people don't do for themselves we're just like another platform for people yeah. to have their stuff on and like if they need help printing or that they want to send copies so i have them on a table to show or put them on the website like that's one thing but i always tell people it's like we're not a publishing company we're not like a huge distributor you know, we just try to help people that are doing the work themselves. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, sorry to go long. I just wanted to say that because it's kind of like a weird trajectory. No, <laughs> hell yeah, that's, dude, awesome, that, man. that's an awesome it's, story to me. I nice. wish you wouldn't have deleted the message. We could have been talking years ago. <laughs> yeah. You guys would have said, uh, we don't print dummy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can help, I mean, we, but we, we, always, we just go through other places. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, not like we have the yeah. printing press in our office or anything. So. But this guy is a wizard when it comes to like layout and making sure that everything is in format properly to where, when it gets to the printer, there's no issues. It never gets sent back and all that. He, he knows it, def- it gets sent back once in a while. But- I say never, but you know, <laughs> Hey, when, when you're, when you're batting 500, you're doing pretty good. We do an eye. Yeah, well, sorry for making you guys go long on that last part. Just wanted to say that because it's funny. <laughs> All good, man. No, that's did, awesome. Though. Love the story. Yeah, man. It was really nice getting to talk to you and uh, nice finally meeting you, man. I uh, hope you all the best. If anything we can do for you, you know, send us more copies of some books. You got some lying around. Um, I got a couple of each, I think, still, but always down to take on more of the nugget. They're going fast. 
So. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys. Oh, yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. This has been another issue or issue. issue. This is yeah. another episode of the Rat Nest Podcast. You can catch us every Friday on YouTube for the video and anywhere you stream your podcast for the audio. Go to ratnestsickerco.com for print, zines, nugget, and more. Jim? Shout out Jay Riley, uh, local Redlands dis distillery, and I'm Jim. Hey.